The idea of life on Mars has been with us for nearly 300 years, ever since early astronomers saw what they believed to be polar ice caps through their primitive telescopes. Since then, space probes have indeed confirmed that the red planet has water, and future missions might tell us if Mars contains any traces of life, whether extinct or still active. Such a discovery would be of tremendous scientific significance, the first time that any signs of extraterrestrial life have ever been detected. Many people would also find it heartening to learn that we are not entirely alone in this vast, cold cosmos. Well, I hope that our probes will discover nothing. It would be great news to find that Mars is a completely sterile planet. Dead rocks and lifeless sands would lift my spirit. On the other hand, if we discovered traces of some simple extinct life form, a bacterium, some algae, it would be bad news. If we found fossils of something even more advanced, like a trilobite, or even the skeleton of a small mammal, it would be horrible news. The more complex the life we found, the more depressing the news. Scientifically interesting, yes, but dire news for the future of the human race. Let me explain. It's a fact that UFO believers notwithstanding, there's been no objective evidence for the existence of any extraterrestrial civilization. They visit us in books and films and in rumors on internet chat rooms, but to date we have not received any alien visitors nor have our radio telescopes detected their signals. As far as we can determine, the night sky is empty and silent. We know that the universe contains many stars, some hundred billion of them in our galaxy alone, and the observable universe contains billions of galaxies. Thanks to recent astronomical discoveries, we now know that it's common for these stars to have planets, including Earth-like planets. Many of these solar systems are much older than our own, yet so far no extraterrestrial civilization has showed up in our neighborhood. So what's stopping them? There must be some kind of barrier that prevents the rise of intelligent, self-aware, technologically advanced, space colonizing civilizations. We can conceptualize this barrier as a great filter. In essence, one or more highly improbable steps along the path that starts with the creation of a planet and ends with a race capable of colonizing the galaxy in spacecraft. Somewhere between those two points, the great filter operates, and it must be powerful enough that even with all the billion of possible starting worlds on which life might evolve, all those rolls of the cosmic dice, one ends up with nothing. The important question for us, however, is just where might this great filter be located? Is it behind us in our distant past, or somewhere ahead of us in the millennia or decades to come. Consider first the possibility that the filter is in our past, somewhere between the creation of our planet and the emergence of digital technology. We tend to take it for granted that the evolution of life was straightforward. Lengthy, yes, complex, sure, but ultimately inevitable, well, because we are here. But perhaps it's extremely improbable that on any Earth-like planet even simple self-replicating organisms should emerge. Perhaps that very first step could be the great filter in which almost all planets get stuck. Or perhaps it comes later, during the transition from the most basic form of life into something more complex. For example, it took 1.8 billion years for life on Earth to evolve from prokaryotes, the most basic organism, into eukaryotes, still very simple, but with the addition of a membrane-enclosed cell nucleus. All that time in which apparently nothing much happened suggests that some extraordinary, improbable coincidence, some bit of amazing luck, might have been required in order for the right set of mutations to occur to enable something simple to become something just a bit more complex. This step is a good candidate for a great filter. 
Others include the rise of multicellular organisms or sexual reproduction. Each of these steps took a very long time, suggesting that they might have required a huge amount of evolutionary trial and error, combined with a huge amount of luck to overcome some vast improbability. So one possibility is that the great filter is behind us and, if so, this also explains the absence of observable aliens. Why? Well, because if the rise of intelligent life is sufficiently improbable, then it follows that we are likely the only such civilization in our galaxy or even in the entire observable universe. Don't like the idea of such a desolate universe? Okay. So what about the possibility that a great filter is ahead of us in our future? That would mean that there is some great improbability that prevents humanity and perhaps all technological civilizations from traveling to other parts of the galaxy and making their presence known to others. But what have we got to fear? Nuclear war? Environmental disaster? A deadly superbug? We might recover from any of these eventually. Only something that could cause an existential disaster may qualify as a great filter. The kind of collapse that merely delays the eventual emergence of a space colonizing civilization by a few hundred or a few thousand years would not help explain why no such civilization has visited us from another planet. A few thousand years may seem a long time, but in this context, it's a sneeze. There are planets that are billions of years older than the Earth. Any intelligent species on those planets would have had ample time to recover from repeated social and ecological collapses. Even if they failed a thousand times before they succeeded, they could still have arrived here hundreds of millions of years ago. Obviously, we must hope that the great filter is behind us rather than ahead of us. If it is true that almost all intelligent species go extinct before they master the technology for space colonization, then we must expect that our own species too will go extinct before reaching technological maturity, since we have no reason to think that we will be any luckier than most other species at our stage of development. Now, what does all this have to do with finding life on Mars? Consider the implications of discovering that life had evolved independently on another planet in our solar system. That discovery would suggest that the emergence of life is not a very improbable event. If it happened independently twice here in our own backyard, it must have happened millions of times across the galaxy. This would mean that the great filter is less likely to occur in the early life of planets and is therefore more likely still to come. If we discovered some very simple life form on Mars, in its soil or under the ice of the polar caps, it would show that the great filter must exist somewhere after that period in evolution. If we then discovered a more advanced life form, such as some kind of multicellular organism, this again would be even worse news for us. And if we discover the fossils of some very complex life forms, like a vertebrate mammal, we would have to conclude that the probability is overwhelming that the bulk of the great filter is ahead of us. Such a discovery would be a crushing blow. And yet, most people reading about the discovery would be thrilled, not realizing that they were looking at the worst news ever displayed on the front page of a newspaper. If the great filter is not behind us, it is ahead of us, meaning that the human species is doomed to fail ever to reach technological maturity. So this is why I'm hoping that our space probes will discover dead rocks and lifeless sands on Mars and also on Jupiter's moon Europa and everywhere else our astronomers look. It would keep alive the hope for a great future for humanity. Mm -hmm.